I do hope. Can you hear me? Okay. Enjoying that wonderful music. I do hope that as you were just listening, the spirit of Christmas was even more vibrant for you. Welcome to Gloria Day Lutheran Church here in Bristol, Connecticut. And as I often say, bordering Plainville and Forestville, we are so glad that you're here this afternoon to share in this Christmas Eve worship. Isn't God good? We say here that God is good. And all the time. And we're excited to have each and every one of you here with us. And those who may be watching online, we're glad that you're watching. We really wish you could be here with us, but you're watching, so we're kind of reaching out and giving you a hug over the airwaves here. So again, I don't know, how many of you, is this your first time here at Gloria Day? If this is your first time here, just wave, raise your hand. You mean all of you have been here before? Well, I'm glad that you're coming here for this Christmas Eve reunion. It's good to have you here with us today. So let's see, what have we got going on here? We've got a couple of announcements, I believe. One of the most important ones is that you are welcome in this place. You are welcome in this place. This is God's house. And we're all part of God's family. And someone says that some of us uh, might be a little dis more dysfunctional than others, but we're all part of God's family. So we're glad that you're here. We want to invite you during the week on, at um, noon on Wednesdays. We're in Zoom. We're on Zoom in prayer, just lifting up one another in prayer. And then on 6.30 Wednesday evenings, we do have Bible study on Zoom as well. And let me see if there's something else in here that I need to make you aware of. Anybody out there need to make an announcement that I am not, that I might miss? I heard something. Christmas service tomorrow? Christmas service tomorrow? Where? Hey, that sounds good to me. You're all invited to come back and join us tomorrow morning at 9.30 right here at Gloria Day. Those of you who may be kind of, uh, maybe you can come, yeah, come on and join us. And I think I heard something about that there might be some pancakes after worship. So you're invited to come and be a part of our worship service on tomorrow as well. Continue to join in worship as we enjoy our prelude for this day.
Hello? I'll just say it loud. Okay. <laughs> Today we celebrate the gift of incarnation. Emmanuel, God with us. We celebrate the birth of Christ, who is the light of the world, a light no darkness can extinguish. Christ's light can enter any darkness as a member of the body of Christ. We live in the light of Christ. And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we saw his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John chapter 1, verse 14. Jesus, Son of God, chose to be born of Mary, to become human, one of us. He lived among us, experiencing our joys and hopes, our struggles and challenges. He, became, he came to us out of the darkness to which he had fallen and into God's wonderful eternal light. Receive the light of Christ in our hearts and share it generously and joyfully in our families and communities. We ask this in the name of the one born in Bethlehem, Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. We invite you to join in with us as we sing Angels We Have Heard on High in your, in your hymnals number 289.
The Old Testament lesson is from the ninth chapter of Isaiah, beginning at the second verse. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing the plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders. He is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. This evening's psalm is Psalm 96, and we will read it responsively. O sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples, Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established. Its Let the heavens be glad, and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar, and all that fills it. Before the Lord, for he is coming, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. <clears throat> The second lesson is from Paul's letter to Titus, beginning at the second verse. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age, to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly. While we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. This is the word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel according to Luke. Being read from chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy to all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them, the gospel of the Lord. You, you may be seated. So many of you who have been here to Gloria Day on many other occasions, normally the minister, the pastor, is there from the pulpit area. But I like to be down here with all of you. So I hope you won't mind and you won't just kind of say, oh, she didn't know what she was doing. I want to be here with you. And before I go into my message for this afternoon, I have a... A little bell. I'm going to ask the children to come and join me just so that we can sing jingle bells real quick. And I'm sorry for all of you adults who really want to be kids and I didn't bring enough bells for you. But you are allowed to sing with us. Let's see, I think I saw a bunch of other boys. Where did they disappear to? Okay. Now let's see. Come on over here. How many of you know Jingle Bells? I mean, with the weather that's been across the country, I'm sure some people are thinking of dashing through some snow. Hi there. Hi, hi, hi. Everybody has their Jingle Bells? If you shake them really loud and hard, and it's going to be about the same sound. <laughs> so you ready to help sing Jingle Bells? Should we start with dashing through the snow? Yes. Are you all going to help us sing? Is there anybody out there who is not going to help us sing? I hope not. Even if you just move your voice, move your mouth, that'll be, that'll be sufficient. Okay, ready? A one and a two. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the wrong Jingle Bells. Okay. One and two and the three, and let's sing. Dad.
Jingle bells. Doesn't really have a lot to do with Christmas. I don't think I've ever been on a one horse open sleigh. <laughs> In fact, now that I think about it, the last time I was on a sleigh or sled was when I took my two small children out sledding because we all thought it would be a good idea. Well, my son was the oldest at that time and my daughter was right behind him. So I, being the protective parent that I am, sat my son in front, my daughter in the middle, and I sat in the back. That way I could protect them all. We went down the hill. My son's boots pushed through the snow, making it all come and hit me in the face. <laughs> I don't know, I didn't go sledding after that. <laughs> but let's take a look at our text today. A story that we have heard before. And yet, what is intriguing me right now is one little word. One three-letter word. You might say, what in the world is that? It's not joy. That one little word is the word yes. Yes. Why is it intriguing me? If you were reading and listening to the gospel text, it told the story of a young woman by the name of Mary. Have you ever thought what it would be like if when the angel told her that she would be carrying this child, if she had said, I don't think so. Not me, you better get somebody else. But Mary said, yes. Because of Mary's yes, we're able to come together and celebrate the birth of the Christ child. When I think about that one word, I think about myself, and I imagine you can probably go down your memory lane and think about the times when you were asked to do something and you were hesitant. And you were like, let me think about it. You were like, I don't know, maybe you should ask somebody else. And right on the tip of your tongue, there was the word, no. But Mary said, yes. Because she said yes to God's plan for her life, we can gather and worship the Christ, the King, as a forgiven people, as people that know that God has loved us right where we are. Because Mary said yes. Not only did she say yes, but Joseph agreed as well. If you can imagine the predicament that they both were in, I'm sure society would not have relished what was going on. But in spite of what society might have been saying, they still were open to the leading of the Lord. They still were willing to say, okay, God, if there's anybody that you can use, you can use me. When we gather in worship, very often our hearts are turned in a different way. Very often our hearts are wondering, okay, I'm coming because it's the thing to do. But I believe that just as Mary said yes, that our Lord is asking a yes from each one of us. Not just a yes to come to church, not just a yes to serve on a committee, but a yes to follow Jesus wherever he might take us, wherever the path may bring us. Jesus is asking each one of us to say yes. There's a, a hymn that I remember singing as a child and the words were all to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him and in his service daily live. I surrender all. 
I surrender all, all to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. What does that mean? It means just yes. Lord, here I am. You can use me. You can use my voice. You can use my hands. You can use my feet. You can use my ideas. You can use me any way you choose. I trust that on this Christmas Eve, you will consider the yes that God is asking of you. It might be a difficult one to love your neighbor. It might be a challenging one Oh, to love those who really mistreat you. It might be a yes to forgiving someone. I trust that on this Christmas Eve, your heart will say yes to the Christ child. Amen. O little town of Bethlehem, hymn number 279.
let us profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With wonder and thanksgiving for Christ coming into the world, we pray for the church, the world, and the whole human family. Your infinite love is born to us this night. Help us to remember that love and the strength and joy that comes from realizing his presence is with us as we move through this transition process. With choirs of angels, we proclaim the good news. Send us out as messengers of the hope that has come to all people. God of grace, you are pleased to, to dwell with your creatures and the whole earth sings for joy. Renew in us the awe of the splendor of your creation. Guide us to be wise stewards of your gifts for the sake of generations to come. God of grace, your authority is over the nations. Break the rod of oppression in every land and free all people from fear. Bring peace where there is war, compassion where there is suffering, and healing where there is disease. God of grace, You cherish those who are most vulnerable. Protect infants and children, and bless those who care for them. Watch over women giving birth, attend the dying, and relieve any who are in pain. Shelter and watch over individuals and families experiencing hunger, homelessness, or impoverishment. We pray for Gloria Day's ministry of food and diaper distribution and all those who support it. We pray for the support of the Family Promise Ministry. God of grace, your loving kindness embraces everyone in need. Help any for whom this season is lonely or joyless. Com comfort those among us who know who known to us or are missing loved ones, grieving or in need of healing of body, mind, or spirit, especially those we name now, either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. God of grace, Pondering the mystery of eternal love made flesh in Jesus Christ, we commend all for whom we pray to the mercy of God. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share a sign of that peace with one another.
Let us pray. Merciful God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, our time, ourselves, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise. We praise your name and join in their unending hymn. betrayed, our Lord took bread and broke it and gave thanks. He gave it to the disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And as we gather at this table, where all are welcome, at our Lord's table, where he always says, come, and not just on Christmas Eve, but whenever you gather together, do this in the remembrance of me. Here at Gloria Day, everyone is welcome to receive communion. It's not necessary for you to be good enough or to have been at church 12 months out of the year. There's no checklist that you have to check off in order to be able to come here and share at our Lord's table. So we invite you to come. For those who might need gluten-free wafers, we have them available for you. And we invite you as you take your communion cup to place it in the containers to the side of you. So as we continue, I invite you to join with me in saying our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, would be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As I said, all are welcome. If you choose not to come and receive communion, you can certainly come and hold your hands across your chest and we will pray for you and receive a blessing.
receive the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. How blessed come to his table and to do this as we remember his suffering in our place. May this experience today encourage you, draw you closer, and may you share the good news of what our Lord has done for each one of us. Gracious God, thank you for this, your body and your blood, which not only supplies physical nourishment for us, but spiritual as well. We give you thanks in our Lord's name. Amen.
invite you to join in and sing a silent night with us. It is in your hymnals, but since the light is dim, sing from memory. Won't you join with us?